Well, the Space Launch System is America's answer to deep space exploration. It's designed to carry uh, the Orion spacecraft uh, to deep space. Uh, we're talking about missions to the vicinity of the moon, asteroids, uh, Mars. Uh, so say you and perhaps four or five of your friends want to go off to the uh, vicinity of the moon. Uh, there's really no way to do it right now. So SLS bridges that gap and allows deep space exploration. No American-built rocket right now is capable of carrying our astronauts to even low Earth orbit, never mind deep space. Uh, the Space Launch System is being designed to be a heavy lift rocket, meaning it can carry an enormous amount of crew, cargo, science experiments uh, off to beyond low Earth orbit, uh, back to deep space, where we uh, had been back during the Apollo era, but have not been back since. We need to get back to deep space. Uh, we have not been back to the vicinity of the moon since 1972 and the capability of doing that is very unique and it brings, brings with it some uh, fantastic uh, possibilities for human spaceflight exploration. Uh, we are talking about missions to capture an asteroid. 65 million years ago, it was a bad day for the dinosaurs, of course. Uh, mass extinctions have occurred throughout human history, and many of those have been brought forth by uh, the surprise asteroid that comes by. Over the past several years, we have been surprised uh, here on Earth by asteroids that have passed very close to Earth or even have collided with Earth and have ca caused damage. Uh, the dinosaurs did not have a space program, so SLS brings forth the capability to go out and explore and perhaps learn more about these asteroids. Langley leads the program in development of the aerodynamic databases. We do this using advanced computer simulations of the aerodynamic environments around the Space Launch System vehicle as it flies through the dense part of the atmosphere uh, on its way to orbit. Uh, we also do a, a great deal of wind tunnel testing, uh, so we have a good partnership between computer simulation and wind tunnel testing. We still have to do the tried and true wind tunnel testing to verify a lot of these loads and forces that are applied to the vehicle. So Langley's role in development of these databases is to uh, play a, a large part in the determination of whether or not the vehicle can survive the aerodynamic environment that is Im imposed, that's imposed on it during flight. It's actually really exciting. So this second round of testing at the Transonic Dynamics Tunnel is again focused on the Buffett environment or how the uh, aerodynamics uh, as the vehicle goes through transonic flight shakes the vehicle. Um, if you stick your hand outside of your car window, um, you not only get the hand, the hand isn't push, is not only pushed backward at 70 miles an hour, but it's also buffeted, it's shaken. Imagine those forces at uh, uh, Mach 1, Mach 2, as you uh, are on your way to orbit on a large vehicle like this. The vehicle can shake a great deal. And so the test here at TDT is focused on uh, ensuring that the loads imparted to the vehicle by those unsteady aerodynamic forces that the vehicle can take the loads and not break apart. Uh, one thing that's really exciting about this test is that we may sh change the shape of the vehicle. Uh, we're testing three different sh nose cone shapes for the solid rocket motors, the two, the two slender boosters on the sides of the core stage of the, of the space launch system. So we're going to explore the ways that these three different shapes affect the Buffett environment on the vehicle and, and how the Buffett environment shakes the vehicle. And so you can think back to uh, the iconic shapes of uh, the Apollo spacecraft or the Saturn V or, or the space shuttle. Uh, those those shapes were all designed for a reason, and so to be part of a program here at the Transonic Dynamics Tunnel that can actually change and affect the shape of the vehicle is really exciting and something that we could all be proud of.